Now we're going to talk about the transverse plane. Remember that tutu on the ballerina in your music box. Okay, that tutu represents the plane cutting her body into superior and inferior halves and then that metal rod running straight through her. That's the axis about which that rotation occurs. All right, so any type of rotation, let's think the neck, saying no. Think about a rod running straight through, like my spine, like my spinal cord. Think about that being like a rod running straight through the middle of my body and then me rotating about that fixed axis. That axis has quite a few names. We could call it a longitudinal axis. We could call it the superior to inferior axis because it's running from top to bottom like that. Um, we could also call it a vertical axis. All of those names are used interchangeably to describe that relationship. And again, it's gonna be perpendicular to that plane. All right, anything that has rotation in it pretty much is going to occur in that transverse plane. So if we're looking at the shoulder, and I don't want you to think about anything below the elbow, okay? So try to keep all that still, but just rotate that humerus in that socket. That's internal and external rotation. A lot of times when you see this illustrated, you'll see the elbow inflection, but that's just to show you what's happening here. If I kept my arm down, it's hard to really see what's going on here. But you see that that rotation is occurring if I flex my elbow. Okay, so that's external rotation, internal rotation. I can also rotate my spine all the way down those incremental segments of the vertebra. Um, I also have pronation and supination. So pronation, I pour it out. Supination, I hold the soup. Pour it out, soup it up, pour it out. Pronation, supination. Um, that's occurring here. That's a forearm movement, not up here at my humerus. A lot of times when we're doing um, rotational movement, though, we're going to combine those two joints together. We're going to have movement at the shoulder and pronation here at the forearm. We're going to externally rotate and supinate at the forearm, and that's going to give us more range of motion. Um, to show you the hip, we've got internal and external rotation. Another odd one to look at is if I were to plant and then cut. Think about like playing um, soccer, or basketball, any of those movements. I do have a little bit of rotation occurring at the tibia, at the knee. You actually do have medial and lateral rotation um, at the knee joint. It's very passive though. You can't just bend your knee and say, I'm gonna rotate my tibia. That's not how it works. Um, that's a passive movement and you have a little bit of give there so that when you're doing those cutting movements, those lateral movements, or you're decelerating and accelerating, your joints got to have a little bit of flexibility there to move in that way to protect those joint surfaces. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else, rotation. I think we've cut, covered all of those rotational movements, but I did want to talk to you very quickly about circumduction. A lot of times students will confuse rotation and circumduction. Circumduction, you are drawing a circle. You're drawing a circle. You're drawing a circle. So think if I had a crayon on top of my head and I would try to draw a circle with my head. Okay, that's a combination of flexion, lateral flexion, um, extension and lateral flexion to the other side. That's combining all of those movements together. That is not rotation. This is rotation. This is rotation. This is circumduction. Okay, we're not drawing circles. We're rotating. All right, two different things. The other weird one that sometimes people will confuse with a transverse plane movement is opposition. This is one thing that makes us human. We can actually have opposition here at our thumb. That is multiplanar. So think I have a little bit of flexion and then I have a little bit of abduction. We have a lot of things going on at the same time. We're crossing multiple planes. And that's a really unique thing that we can do. Think about holding a pencil, all of those fine motor things that you can do. It's very amazing that we can do that. But it's multiplanar. It's called opposition. That is not a transverse plane movement. Another thing to think about are your shoulder blades. That's a gliding joint. So it's non-axial unless we're talking about protraction and retraction. Or you could think of here's my spine. 
I'm going away from my spine, that's abduction, and then retraction or adduction, I'm coming back towards my spine. So if I were to cue you to throw a punch and you let that shoulder blade shift around my rib cage, that would be protraction or abduction. And then say, I told you to squeeze your shoulder blades together. I'm bringing those two, think about plates on a surface and they're coming together, squeezing together. So squeeze your shoulder blades, that's adduction. Okay, now that's a transverse movement, which is crazy because we're talking about abduction and adduction. I told you that was frontal plane, right? But if you think about that, think about that tutu. Those shoulder blades or scapula, they are traveling around the edges of that tutu, right? So that should make sense that those are also going to be transverse plane movements. Your scapula can also go up and down, elevation and depression. That would be more like a frontal planar movement. And then they can also go into upward rotation and downward rotation. When I take my arm up over 90 degrees, my scapula has to come up a little bit into upward rotation to let me do that. And then when I return down, it comes back into that downward rotation. The only other part of the transverse plane that I almost forgot is horizontal adduction and abduction. So think about if you're in the gym and you're doing a chest fly, you're working out on the pec deck, okay? I'm bringing my arm into the midline and I'm taking my arm away from the midline. But it's horizontal, okay? So that should go in alignment with the 2-2, right? Transverse planar movement, we call it horizontal AB, horizontal AD. AD adding together, AB taking them away. That should be all of the transverse play movements that he would be covering in this class.